Groceries are one of the most expensive things we spend our money on week to week, and we wanna make sure we get the most value out of all that food we purchase, and a big part of that is making sure we don't waste any of it. This week on Problem Solved, I'm putting a bite back into your budget. A little kitchen know-how can save you some dough. Bone-in chicken's gonna be a better value at the grocery store. The less processed, the more you get to save. I'm getting a whole chicken, but I wanna see if they had organic whole chicken. It's actually not a bad price per pound, and these are pretty big. This is a good one. I only need one, but I'm gonna get two so I can freeze it and save it for later. Breaking down a chicken can be a little intimidating, so here's what you need to know. I like skin on bone-in chicken. It has a lot more flavor flavor, and you can use all the parts of the chicken. A really stable cutting board's important when you're breaking down chicken or any kind of chopping. I like to put a damp paper towel underneath to keep the board from sliding around. I usually break chicken down starting with the wings. I'm gonna cut through and I'm looking for the joint. You can also use kitchen shears if you have a good sturdy pair. Then I work on that dark meat, the thighs, and the legs. This should not be difficult. It should actually be pretty effortless. You wanna find those joints and cut through those, not cut through the bone. If you're new to this and unsure, you can always bend it back. The joint will reveal itself and you'll cut right through. Last, you'll just remove the breast from the backbone. Same thing, find those joints, cut through on each side. You can split the breast in half. I like to even out and smooth out the skin. Now right down the center. Even use those scissors to trim up a few of the pieces, remove any excess fat. You can break those wings down even further into the drumette and the flat and keep those wing tips for soups and stocks. Boneless, skinless chicken thighs at the grocery store are a good value. An even better value is get bone-in skin on and do it yourself. You wanna use a small boning knife or paring knife and cut the meat away from the bone. You go underneath the bone and just cut both sides out. Whenever you're working on any knife skills, just remember, take your time, go slow. Then I like to clean them up a little bit. You can remove the skin or cook it with the skin on, of course. After all, butchers can do this really quick. They're doing 100 a day. You can take your time. Don't discard those trimmings and bones. That's good stuff. I like to save it if I'm not gonna use it right away. I just freeze it and then I have some good soup bones ready to go when I need them. It doesn't look pretty, but it's gonna taste pretty. Look for those bone-in options. You can even buy better quality chicken and it'll give you more value. Class dismissed. What recipe should I make with this? Clean up on aisle 15. The poor rice is such a mess over here. What happened? I have some jasmine rice already. I'm looking for basmati rice. Oh, basmati is right up here. Oh, dry pasta too. Do we have pasta at the house? Gosh, this is why you double check the pantry before you go grocery shopping so you don't end up like me. Like, do I have pasta in the cabinet? Dry goods and pantry staples last for a long time, but there's a few things you can do to make sure nothing goes to waste. Expiration dates can be in small print or wear off. So I just use a marker to write the expiration date in large print on the top. That small print's hard to read. At first glance, I can see exactly when this expires. Anytime you're restocking, pull the older stuff to the front, put your new stuff in the back. You may think that decanting is just a fancy waste of time. It's not. Storing dry goods in an airtight container can actually help it stay fresher longer. Chips, cereal, snacks, this top is not enough to keep them fresh, so decanting can actually make these last longer. And depending on your container and the packaging, you don't actually have to decant. Sometimes I do it the lazy way. These zipper seals, although convenient, can be messy and not the best solution for long-term storage. Containers can be expensive, mason jars are not. And pick up washable, reusable lids. Shake your daughter, shake your body right. Shake, shake, shake. Beetlejuice 2 coming out only in theaters. Michael Keaton returns as Beetlejuice. Who asked for this new Beetlejuice movie? Decanting all of this and realizing that I actually should put the dates on the bottom of all this stuff so I don't forget. Do it right away, because future you is not going to do it. There is a difference between use by, expires, and best buy. Maybe we should uh, tackle that in the future. Pests can destroy good food well before it expires. One preventative measure, bay leaf. You can place these around your pantry or put them in individual dry food containers. And these won't pass on any smell or flavor. I guess bugs don't like the smell? Just be sure to keep it on the surface. Don't bury it inside. Now be a savvy shopper. When you're picking up your canned goods, check that date. If it's something that you're gonna use right away, the date doesn't really matter, but if it's something you're looking to store for a long time, get the one with the longest shelf life. No matter what, if it's a pantry closet or just a few shelves in a cabinet, keep things clean. You wanna get rid of any food particles because that's how you get ants. Picking out some produce, hopefully lasts me a couple weeks. I like how everything I need is right here. The Imperfect bin has cheaper produce. So I'm gonna go check that out. 
Only tomatoes over there, really. They're kind of soft. All right, if I was using them today, I would get them. Root vegetables can last quite a while if stored properly. If you want your produce to last, start with good fresh produce. Before you leave the grocery store, check for bruising, mold, if your potatoes have divots, any sign that these may not be the freshest, and a squeeze test to make sure everything's nice and firm. If you pick up the bad rotten one or the one that's gonna go bad soon, you'll have less shelf life, right? So do your best to find the quality ones. And with onions, I like to check for dark spots, which could be an indication that mold's already there. You know what they say, one bad onion spoils the bunch. This is an extreme case, but you don't want any sprouting. Make sure the skin is nice and intact and none of the internal onion is showing through. Without those outer layers, your onion will dry out and go bad quicker. So many layers, just like my favorite ogre friend. Storage is easy. All you need is a cool, dark place. You need a container or basket with plenty of ventilation. And you don't need any kind of specialty storage device. They come in handy, but not necessary. A woven basket basket is nice and decorative, or a simple storage container. The key is a lot of perforations for airflow. Choose a container like this if you need to store that produce on a countertop. You want to block out as much light as possible, so something like this will do the trick. I like to layer a towel. You can even mix up varieties of potatoes. And don't wash the potatoes before storing. You want them nice and dry. You can wash them before you cook with them. Keeping these out of the light will prevent them from sprouting. If you're low on pantry or countertop space, a mesh bag for your onions is great. You can load these up and then just hang them up. This even has a little Velcro hatch to get the onions from the side. Bags like this are handy because you can load your new onions on the top and use your older onions at the bottom to just access them from the side. It's pretty cool. Just like the onions, same goes for your shallots and garlic. To keep things cool, store these far away from stoves and heat sources. Onions and potatoes emit gases that will actually make them go bad quicker when they're together. So you gotta keep them separated. Break it up, you two. Some simple tips to prevent spoilage and wasted food. Do I have any even cut you open yet and I could cry. Grocery prices have been such a topic of discussion lately, so I'm trying to stick to the staples, stick to the basics, keep things, you know, more affordable. Then maybe layer in some specialty ingredients here and there. They sell Danos here? I've always wanted to try this stuff. Of course I want the spicy one. Dan, do you sell this in a smaller quantity? I feel like this is gonna take me forever to use. I need a much more approachable and entry-level Danos. There we go. Thanks, Dano. Something for the everyday user. Be honest, do you let leftovers go to waste each week? And it's not just about wasted food, it's about all your money down the drain. So here are some practical reminders to make sure you're getting the most value out of the food you prepare. If you're someone who routinely wastes leftovers, go for smaller portions. I can't let any of this go to waste. I'll just lick the skillet. Less to make, less to waste. And share the bounty. Do a leftover share. If you have close friends or family nearby, one person can cook and share the meals with everyone. Exactly why with leftovers and cleaning a pan, a spatula is so handy, because you can really get everything out. Now that pan's practically clean. Looks like I may have to share dish duty with my friends and neighbors too. Those food storage containers can be expensive, so you don't want to lose those to family and friends. I like these reusable to-go food containers, the same ones you get from restaurants, they make packing and sharing leftovers way easier. Cheap and no need to return to sender. So what do you think? Is meal prep just leftovers? Something else you can do is portioning your leftovers. If you portion leftovers, it's great for grab and go lunches. And instead of grabbing a huge container out of the fridge, your family may be more inclined to just grab the portion that they need. Deli containers are staple in my kitchen, both for prep and for storage. This also makes mixing and matching different leftovers much easier too. And of course, don't forget about your freezer. I like to portion my leftovers and if I know I'm not eating them right away, I pack them in a zip top bag for extra frost protection. Zip it, label it, freeze it. Less waste and more value from all the groceries that you purchased. Problem solved. When your cookies burn you. and your oven is a mess, don't you worry, friend, the fix is effort. The magic potion. I'm the problem solver. I got all the tricks all around the house. Just watch me fix Just a little sweater haircut. I'm the problem solver. So problem easy. Solved. If your stain is tricky, I'll get it resolved. Way better. From the kitchen to the bathroom, you know who to call. Cleaning tips and cooking tricks, I'll solve it all. Ta-da! Problem solved.